Hey everyone, it's Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about some of these tips that we just didn't cover in the first eight tips video. There's eight tips that I really want to talk about, some being very basic, but some actually being very, very important. So let's get started with the very first one. So as we get done with this raid here, we actually have one more person to kill. I'll actually explain that health is not from your armor. Health is generated, your max health here when you click on your armor tab, is generated from the combat level in that episode. So I have 162 max health here in Chronopolis, and if we actually take a teleport to, let's go to, I think Hopeport is my lowest combat, let's see. It is not mine, is my lowest, but it should be still a different number when we teleport to the Hope Port. And you can see here it reflects there as a 156 max health. So the max health does go up based on your level in that zone, that combat level. So that's something very, very important. People don't actually understand. It doesn't go up based on your armor, just your resistances do on the right side, your deflect resistances. So uh, let's go back to Chronopolis as we talk a little bit more about Alchemist. So if you are actually gathering in episode two, if you made it to episode two, you started to gather, you aren't going to be able to bank anywhere, it feels like, because there's no place in episode two to actually bank your resources. So if you're looking to actually gather, you would be starting with the globe plants by the road to hope port in episode two. Then you'd have the huntsman's clearing with the dandelions as well. Where would you actually bank these? A lot of people might not know right away. And it's because it's right here, actually, in episode one. You'd have to run back through the town gates to episode one and go to the apothecary this is actually going to be your bank in episode one for your episode two gathering profession very interesting so i thought that would be useful to point out so one thing that people don't know here and this is kind of surprising you can actually move your map around and this is pretty obvious a lot of people know this however once you click it'll stay there and what makes this even better is if, with the bag if you move it around it won't stay there. So why is it not staying there? You want to keep that bag open. You just click the arrow on the left side and you can actually keep it up at all times, even when you're moving around. So you can actually um, make the backpack bigger, make the map bigger you can go to your spells. You can go to your settings. All of these things are available. And um, it's very, very simple to actually keep this open at all times. So it actually doesn't go away. And it's very useful. Definitely when getting around the map, if you want to zoom in real close so you can see your character walking around, very, very useful. Um, another thing I want to kind of showcase is on the right side, the same thing is possible. So if you want to keep this open at all times, you definitely can. Um, and it can be very, very useful to keep some of these things open, definitely if you're doing a quest. So here, if I'm doing the main story quest and I want to see what I will have to get, these things can stay open like the map and the main story quest. So very, very useful or with the bounties as well. Uh, next, I want to talk about the banking. So banking, like I said previously, is very scarce in this game. So play around banking. Most professions have their own one bank. A lot of professions only have one bank until you get to about episode four, which you won't be really utilizing that bank as much. The one bank is going to be very important. So if we actually take a look here at the map, if we want to go full screen, we actually have to click the map. Um, but we go to the map, let's actually go to episode two and let's look at Timberwell, for example. So we have the timber bank here and the lumber bank is actually in the carpenter's workshop. So to actually bank at the lumber bank, you would have to run all the way across the map if you were doing Swave logs or U logs in the top left. So if you're just looking for XP, make sure you're around a bank that makes sense. Um, or a spot that makes sense to actually woodcut. Um, and this works for every profession. If you're going that deep, you need to make sure it's worthwhile. Um, you need it for a weapon that you want to craft or something like that. So definitely take advantage of the bank locations, know where they're at. It's very important. Uh, next thing I want to say is you should try to have all of these items at all times as they're commonly using quests. That is the rope, quill, ink, jars, bucket, and all that stuff. And you'll see that here in your tool belt. It's used for quests quite a bit. So this is very important. Here's the quill and ink, paper, the rope. Um, all this stuff is very useful too. I actually need to get some crates on me. Um, but I would like to have all this stuff stacked up very, very well because like I said, it's used in a lot of quests, side quests, main quests. And I believe it's used um, for a couple different other things. Obviously, these are used for alchemists. I'm not even sure what they're called. I'm trying to think of what they're called. But the top right here in the tool belt is used for the alchemist, of course. But all these serve a purpose. So definitely grab those when you can. Um, another thing I want to quickly mention here is you can tune episode one weapons to episode four. So if you go to your bag real quick, uh, I actually don't have anything untuned in my bag, but if this was untuned, uh, this helmet right here, 
I could actually bring this to episode one from episode four and tune it there to have a now tuned uh, episode one helmet that works only in episode one. So it's very interesting how tuning works. You get to pick basically where you want to bring that weapon or gear to uh, kind of main it there because it does make sense with crafting weapons that you couldn't just craft only at the mind of Mantubin and then have to use it at that episode three. So it does actually make a lot of sense. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Uh, another thing I want to quickly mention is the spells. So spells, you start with four of them basically. Take advantage of the Quartermaster in the Teleport spell as much as you possibly can. The Quartermaster is huge. If you click this, it's going to give you the opportunity to actually bank and deposit and withdraw from there. Um, very useful to put these untuned equipments in here if you want to utilize them later at a different episode. Uh, another thing I want to quickly mention is that uh, obviously your health goes up after every single combat. But if you can, it is smart to have... A couple of potions on you whether that's health potions or experience potions these are all very useful in many different scenarios so definitely bring those around uh, but again the teleport spell I can't talk about this is enough this is huge so for an example real quickly I am actually at the saber tooth tiger training my combat here in episode four if I want to get to this location there's a portal stone right here so I can actually run from these tigers over here to the armory, sell my gear, and I'll actually, from here, teleport back to the portal stone and run from there. There's a lot of scenarios that are much more useful than this one that I'm talking about, uh, so make sure to take advantage of these spells. They have no cooldowns, and they're very, very useful. So that's going to be basically all we're going to talk about today on these uh, tips. I thought there were some useful ones that you know a lot of people should know about. Definitely these arrows and keeping these out at all times for bounties and quests. And then on the other side, keeping your map up and your backpack up. It's just very, very helpful to know, hey, I'm about full in the backpack. Hey, I know where I need to go, and these are my bounties I should be doing. Okay, so this is the last thing I really wanted to show you guys is the Grachnid Cave in the mines of Mantubin. This is some part of the main quest that you're going to have to do at some point. So basically follow along here. If you do want this, you can bookmark it or save this video for later. It's at the end of the video and it should be very easy to find back. So basically there's a little maze. You want to walk your way through it. If you don't want to spoil it, obviously just click off. But if you do want this uh, in the future, because it is very, very hard to do. Um, it probably takes 15 minutes of just guessing and checking if you're just doing it blindly. Um, so I'm showing beans here in the closed beta exactly how this works. And uh, so if you guys want to copy and follow along here, definitely do so. If you do step on a wrong tile, you'll get booted back to the front of the cave. So I thought this would be helpful to throw in there for you guys um, just to show you how to get in and out. So that's my take on my tips and tricks. Hopefully that helps you guys in your road to episode four. Thank you guys again. I'll see you all in the next one.